Hi, everybody. So I just wanted to quickly get on here and talk about, and I'm probably going to destroy this name, but Dia, Dia de los Muertos. I want to talk about that. The Day of the Dead. Um, well, I was uh, driving down the road yesterday. Yesterday was October the 31st, Halloween. And I was driving down the road and I saw people, because uh, where I live, there's a lot of farmland and um, a lot of roadside stands. And a lot of these roadside stands are, you know, at this point, not selling much because it's October, November, it's getting cold. And so they'll still sell pumpkins and things like that, whatever, like cold season crops. And then they'll, you won't see them again until the spring. So one of these roadside stands yesterday was selling um, marigolds, these orange and color marigolds. And I said to myself, oh, those are pretty flowers, but why, why is everybody, you know, buying so big on these, these marigolds? I couldn't understand it. And I was like, well, I should stop and get me some flowers, too. It would be nice to have some, you know, some flowers on the, on the kitchen table. And... Um, I didn't think anything of it. And then I realized that those are the flowers that they use for the Day of the Dead. And um, I said, well, first of all, the name. I, I said, you know, is this is this a, a, a holiday that is pleasing unto God? And I said, just the name alone makes you, you kind of shudder like Day of the Dead. But. I said, well, you know what, but maybe, you know, what's the big deal? They are, it's, you know, they're appreciating or remembering, you know, the loved ones in, in their lives that have died and passed away. And we all do that. You know how you sit around and you talk about your grandma or your grandpa or your aunt so-and-so and we remember the good times and you're just lifting up their memory, but you're not worshiping them or anything like that. And, but then... I began to realize that they use the flowers. They use the flowers. They use um, food. They make altars. They do all these different things to honor their dead. And um, they use a glass of water to, so that the spirit, when the spirit come up, the spirit, just in case the little spirit gets thirsty, you know, all this crazy stuff. And um, and some cultures have a nerve to say mix this with Christianity, saying that this is nothing wrong with it. Um, now I've seen blatant occult um, practices where they will um, they'll have these like these altars with dolls, and the the dolls are uh, they put food out for the dolls and everything to eat. Or um, even Buddha, you know, if you if you're a Buddhist, they'll have a Buddha out, and then they'll have little food out for the Buddha to eat and all this stuff. So there's no way that you can get this mixed up and say that this is a um, this is a, a a holiday that is Christian like. Basically, what it is is just ancestor ancestor worship. People who have died that you are trying to contact. And the Bible is explicitly clear. All throughout the Bible tells you, do not consult the dead. Um, and Deuteronomy 18, I think, is where they where it first mentions about, you know, you should not consult the dead. They call that necromancy. And I remember, because I always try to, I always try to keep my uh, video posts prophetic, you know, with, not only with the Logos word, meaning the written word of God, but also the Rhema. So I remember one time um, a friend of mine was dealing with a situation where, you know, a loved one of theirs passed away. And, um, you know, they were telling me how, you know, they felt as though that, that loved one was coming back and talking to them. And, you know, and they just they were comforted by it. Well, I went to bed that night and uh, God was like, and he, he generally says it when he's adamant, when God's, well, God's adamant about everything, but when he's really trying to get my attention so I don't miss it, 
he said he says things to me in like three so he was like that's necromancy that's necromancy that's necromancy oh when i woke up i said i i said god what's necromancy i don't even know what that is at that point i didn't even know what necromancy was and when i looked it up looked up the definition it was the um it's when you try to contact the dead or you divine away there's different ways you can contact the dead or whatever so-called contact the dead um and so at that point, I knew I had to contact my friend and let her know, listen, God is not pleased with you trying to contact your loved one, you know, and not saying that that was your actual loved one, most likely, well, I know for a fact, and in that particular case, I know for a fact that was the demonic impersonating that loved one. So, um... And again, just like I posted about Halloween, the real issue with Halloween is that you're giving the power, your agreement over to the enemy. So anytime you contact, you so-called call yourself contacting your loved one, someone who has passed on, you are giving permission for the demonic to come and harass your household. So, and this was what was happening in this particular case was... The girl, my friend, was missed that loved one so bad. And, you know, she was trying to still have contact with the person to the point where the enemy saw this and was just like, yes, because now I can come into her home and start messing with her. And things were happening in her home. Things that were making her feel uncomfortable. At first it was like, oh, yay, goody. My loved one is, you know, contacting me. But then after a while, that thing began to harass her. So she had to, I instructed her that she needed to repent from what she was doing and shut the door. Spiritually speaking, shut the door in that case. And, um, you know, and I know it's it's hard because... You know, we, we love our loved ones, but at the same time, we got to realize, look, if they're saved, we know that we're going to see them again. And, and if they're not, if they're not saved, you don't know, you still don't know because you never know what conversations they might have had with, with, with Jesus, with God in their last breaths. You know, you never know. So, you know. There's even hope in that, in that situation. Somebody could just squeeze this, squeak through. Yeah, you don't know. So, but um, either way, you're not supposed to contact the dead. And again, this is for your own good. It's not because God is being uh, a meanie and, you know, he's being a meanie. It's, it's because he's trying to protect you from being harassed. You're already going through a hard time as it is because you lost that loved one. You don't need the extra um, issue uh, with the demonic coming in and attacking what's left, attacking the, the, the living, attacking you, attacking your kids, and setting all types of evil uh, workings into, into motion just because you wanted to contact somebody from the other side. You have to renounce all those things. So what, what happens? Okay, let's just say, well, it's too late. I done already did all that stuff. It's as simple as renouncing and repenting. It's as simple as, as that, closing those doors. Um, just to bring it home, I remember when I was younger, I played with um, the Ouija board. And I, I was really young, you know what I mean? Somebody put me up to it, but we was we played it. And we just knew it wasn't right. You know what I mean? We just knew it wasn't right. We act like we was contacting our grandmom or whatever. And um, the little board thing was moving and stuff like that. And we were asking questions and stuff like that. And <clears throat> just knew it wasn't, wasn't right. We played it one time and we just, even back then, we knew mm, just something ain't right with that. But all those years passed, and as an adult, when I became a, uh, uh, a believer, it was one of the things that came to mind that God brought to my mind that I needed to renounce. So I just basically said, God, you know, would you forgive me for 
you know, necromancy. I didn't have that word back then, but would you forgive me for that? And I, I repent and, and Lord, I will never do it again. Any way, shape or form, I will never do it again. Now I say, God, you're God. If you want, if you want to, and people, they, people say, and I know where they get this from, that, um, the dead cannot come back into the earth realm. And I know where they get this from. There's a chapter in the Bible in the New Testament where it talks where Jesus talks about the parable about um Lazarus and and uh about there being a gulf. I'm not gonna go into it, but about there being a gulf and how they couldn't cross over. Now like I said, I'm not going to go into it. This That is a different story for a different day. But all I'm going to say is this. God could do whatever he wants to do. If God wants to escort somebody over here for you to have some peace of mind or whatever about a situation, he can escort that person over. Who are you to say that God can't do it? God can do whatever he wants to do. Um. I'm good. I don't need to see nobody dead. All right. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need to see nobody dead. But there, I will say that there have been times where God have shown me people in my dreams where that person died and God will show me that person in a dream, just basically giving me comfort. And, um, and I'm seeing that that person is in a better place. I put it that way, but I'm good about, you know, I don't need to see nobody dead. I don't need to see none of all that. I don't need to see none of that. So, um, but again, like I said, God can do whatever he wants to do, but I'm not going to take it upon myself and try to make something happen. Um, at some point I will, I will do a, um, a real good teaching on that whole thing with Lazarus and the Gulf and all this different things. So, um, is, is Dia de Muertos, I can't say it, Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead? Is it a good, how, is it a good thing? Is it evil? Well, what do you think? Now it gets, it gets some of its roots from back when the Aztecs, was sitting there sacrificing all these people, killing them for the gods and all these different things. So it has roots in uh, pagan worship, and one of the like one of the worst kind is because you know it was literally killing people to appease gods, and um, we see this back in biblical times where people would kill babies or put babies put babies in a fire. On top of this um, statue, there was a statue who where they would heat this statue up, and they would put it, put the bait, put the babies, let the babies pass through the statue, or let the the um, heated up statue, um, that like the statue had hands, and the hands would get so hot from the fire, and they would put that baby on on those hands, and the baby would sit there and scream its head off, and um, that's how they appeased their gods. And so it's the same thing with the Aztecs were doing. They were basically taking people, killing them to appease um, their gods, which we know is there is no gods. There is just demons. So they went to they went to do that. And so it's just um, they may not sacrifice people, but it's just has evolved. This Day of the Dead has evolved into something more acceptable. And the reason why I talk about the fact that, you know, in my neighborhood and I live in the Northeast, I talk about my neighborhood, how, you know, they were, I noticed that they were selling the marigolds yesterday and I, and I wondered at them. But now it's like, okay, it's already bad enough we got Halloween here in America. Now this Dia de los Muertos is now becoming acceptable here as well so it's just like how many of these ab ab abominations of i mean it's just that we are desensitized at this point we are so desensitized i mean we are a so-called christian nation but yet we let this halloween go on um and the reason behind 
you know, the reason why Halloween blew up so big was because it's commercialized. They want to sell that candy. They want to sell those costumes. You buy one costume for 40 bucks. You wear it one time. And then your kid grow out of it. And then you can't wear it next year. So it's just, it's a big money racket. They ain't worrying about, they're not worrying about demons or anything like that. They're just worrying about making that money. So I guess in a way they are worrying about demons because it's, it's mammon. So <clears throat> they're just worrying about making that money. But anyway, um, I'm just letting you know, you know, because now we're so desensitized with this day of the dead thing that we have it in, um, our little Disney movies now, we have it in, and I ain't gonna lie. When I saw the Disney movie, I I said, "Oh, oh this is a, this ain't bad." They just, you know, they just honoring the dead. You know, they just honoring the dead. But that's how they get us. That's how they they start with your kids. They desensitize your kids, and you watching it as a parent, and now you're desensitized, and it don't seem like such a big deal. But I'm here to tell you, um, to not engage in to to not engage in it, to to. Um, don't defy yourself with it. You know, don't, as my dad always say, you're in the world, but you ain't of it. You ain't got to do everything they do. You ain't got to do everything they do. So, um, it's, it's not, it's definitely not of God. So the question is, is it evil? The people's intention may not be evil, but it is certainly it is certainly um, opening the door for the demonic to come in and have have its way with you. So, all right, guys, that's that's it. So, um, God bless you, and um, like I said, Day of the Dead is November the first and the second. It's two day celebration. So. <laughs> Uh, we really need to pray. We really need to pray as um, as Christians and as believers. God bless you guys. Bye.